In this lesson, we'll learn how to paint a transparency map for our game character's hair. All right, fantastic. So at this point, we're done with the specular map. We've got one more map left to address. Now, uh, typically with game hair, um, you've got sort of a series of planes, like we've seen here for our character. Now, this doesn't look much like hair right now. It just looks like a bunch of clumped up planes together. But the way this hair is uh, displayed in a game engine is it uses a transparency map to mask portions of the planes and hide them. So uh, we can actually go ahead and paint that here in Mari, but unfortunately, we don't have any way of previewing that. Uh, there's no way to actually use that map to hide the actual geometry. Now we can hide the texture and, and view kind of Mari's transparency grid, but we won't be able to preview it. But let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and paint that nonetheless. So we'll go ahead and jump over to our channels. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new channel here and we'll just call this something like transparency map. And we'll go ahead and add it to the character object only for right now. Now, if you wanted to do the same thing for the eyelashes, you'll need to create another channel for that particular object if you're using this file right here. And now if you've got all that geometry in the same OBJ file, then really one map will do. But I'll go ahead and show you how to do that on the character object here. And fantastic. So we've got our transparency map. We'll go ahead and hit the I key to bring up our channel pop-up. And let's come over and select that channel, if it's not already selected, and we'll view the current channel here. So um, you can see, basically, this channel is filled with black. So uh, black is going to hide the entirety of the hair. So uh, we won't want to do that. We'll want to come in here and kind of use both black and white values to um, basically hide and reveal portions of the hair. I'm going to go ahead and hold down my S key and let's come to the UV view. And I'll just go ahead and select those shells that make up the hair. We'll come over here using our face selection and smart select. We'll go ahead and just drag selections across all of those shells. Fantastic. Now remember if we wanted to select all of the uh, all of the stacked or overlapping UVs there, we need to come over here and change the facing mode to through. So uh, let me just go ahead and do that here and here. All right, fantastic. So I'll just switch that back so I don't forget later. And great. We are ready to go ahead and begin painting. So um, now I think that probably uh, the best way to start out with this is to go ahead and just grab a simple basic brush, maybe this hard round ramp up the flow on that. And let's just go ahead and set our color to white. Now white's going to reveal all of this color by default. That looks like I may have accidentally deselected our shells. So uh, let me just select those one more time. Don't need the glasses. All right, fantastic. So um, now I'm going to go ahead and open up the layer stack here. Um, you can see that white paint in my buffer. Remember, we're working with just a simple uh, base layer at this point. So uh, really, that's all we need. We can go ahead and just paint right onto that base layer, just like so. Bake that down. Fantastic. So we're starting with all of the hair revealed. And if we look at the orthographic view, that's kind of what we're looking at. So um, now I'm, this is going to be something that's probably going to be easier to paint uh, in the UV view just because the planes are flattened out and we can really kind of dictate the direction of the hair that way. Um, but a good place to start would be maybe with uh, this image that I've got in your project files. Let me go ahead and pull that in here to my image manager. Just drag that in sort of like that. Now if I look at this image, you'll see that this is just something I made in Photoshop using the fibers filter. So um, this to me uh, looks kind of like striations of hair. So uh, we can come in and begin to use this again simply by dragging this in. And I'll just pick on again this particular shell right here. So I'm going to go ahead and control shift to scale this guy down. And we'll just kind of zoom in on our shell. I'm going to come in and begin to paint this. And again, I'm just using this uh, same brush. We could actually switch over to the default brush. It might be a little bit better because of the fall off around the edges on that brush. And I'm basically going to rotate this image so that it goes kind of the, the fibers run with the direction that I want the hair to go. Sort of like that. And we'll go ahead and bake that down. We'll go ahead and do just a little bit more here. 
Now, an important thing to remember here is kind of how this plane sits on the geometry. So, um, remembering that this edge right down here is going to sit flush with his scalp, while these are the edges of the hair right around in here. So, um, now this particular image that I'm using to, to project down has some darker areas in it, and then it has those right over here. So, what we could do is maybe increase the size of this a little bit and start to layer a little bit of this transparency, these darker areas, kind of down here around the roots of the hair. Just sort of like that. So, what that is going to do is basically make those areas a little bit more transparent. And you can see I'm just kind of moving, shifting, so I can uh, basically bake some of that down into uh, those lower areas right there. So, fantastic. We've got kind of a nice base set for our transparency map. Now, like I said before, there's really no way to preview this inside of Mari, short of uh, using it to mask a diffused texture down to the transparency grid. We can't actually hide geometry or parts of faces based on this map. But, what we can do is we could bounce over to our game engine or our primary 3D application and plug this particular map in there and kind of preview it there and bounce back and forth uh, once we've exported this map out, which we're going to learn about in the next lesson. So, now I wouldn't stop here. This is kind of the start, starting point for this particular uh, map because the real important thing you want to remember is these are the tips of the hair right here. So, we need to basically paint enough black here to make it look like strands of hair. So, we want to basically sort of uh, serrate, if you will, these edges, these nice, clean, flat edges here. So, we learned uh, about one of the hard surface brushes over here that might help us, this metal scratches. And let me just jump back to my layer stack, and I'll create a new paint layer for this. And let's go ahead and make sure our color is set to black here, because now we're just really going to start going after those edges here. I'm just using this exact same brush that we used earlier in this course, and I'm basically going to try and just obliterate that edge. Now, if we need to, we can hit the X key and then set our um, other color here to white so we can come back in if we need to, but I'm going to just come in and really kind of work on these edges some. You can see, uh, you probably hear my stylus tapping on the screen of my Cintiq as I'm, I'm really kind of going after this. Um, so, really, these edges, we don't want to have any visible, um, any visible line of that edge at all. So, I'm just coming in here and really starting to darken up those edges. Now, you can start to see that resolution is becoming a bit of an issue, uh, simply because uh, this is only a 2K map and the size and texture space that this shell takes up, but we're able to, um, I think we're able to get a fairly decent result here. And if we need to, we can always come back in with some whites to kind of break up some of these these bigger, thick black areas if we get get too much black layered in. We can do the same thing down here if we really want to. Come in and start to kind of clump up the hair down here near the scalp. And we'll just kind of pan over and start to work on one more of these strands here. So you can see my brush strokes again focused near the end of the hair, the tips, um, for the most part. Now I am going to kind of start to try and blend that together, um, again by alternating back and forth between my white and black values here. Um, and you can see those fibers are really, we're just kind of a starting point um, to help us begin to create uh, this texture. So uh, I'm going to come in here and really start to hammer away at that edge. And again, we can increase the size of our brush if we wanted to, just to get a little bit bigger brush strokes. Keeping in mind the direction of the hair, we don't want uh, to create kind of hard angles and turns in here.
Now I like to start from black uh, with the rest of the shells in this case because once we, let's say, get enough of this particular shell painted, let me come over here to my orthographic view and you can see here um, as we begin to look at this, these shells right here that I haven't painted on, you can still see kind of that edge. Um, even with a white background for the other shells. But uh, for these up here, if we were to fill these other shells with black, you would start to see that this edge right here begins to disappear because we've painted enough black onto it. Um, so that's how you can begin to paint a transparency map here inside of Mari. You will need to export it out and preview it in either your game engine or your primary 3D application. Um, and then basically bounce back and forth between Mari and that application in order to make changes based on what you're seeing previewed. So.